this is going to be kind of dense, but I have a system of equation here that actually I'm looking for a complex solution. So I'll, this blue statement right here, and I apologize for it being cramped. I try to keep as much as I can. I've gone terser and terser, you know. But again, X and Y are understood to be complex numbers. Remember, a, a real solution is a complex solution with a zero imaginary part. So it doesn't say that all the solutions are complex with non-zero imaginary parts. It's just, in general, we're looking for complex solutions. The real solution's just fine. Now, um, so here's our system here, and it's a lot, it's two equations and two unknowns, but we have this cross term here. And so it, this could get a little daunting to do this directly in my opinion. So what I've done here is I've defined what they call the elementary symmetric polynomials, this sigma one, sigma two notation. And again, sigma one is just all the degree one variables. Uh, sigma two would be degree two variables. And that's kind of the way to look at it. But anyway, these substitutions turn out to be quite useful. Uh, just an example here. Um, if you were to um, do, uh, let's say, I'll just write it down. Just to, I left it out. That's why I'm writing it down right now. But we can see that x squared plus y squared. Okay, um, is equal to, now if you just think of sigma one, what it is, sigma one is x plus y, right? So this is gonna be sigma one squared, right? And again, this would read x plus y quantity squared. We're just trying to condense things. Now, remember x plus y quantity squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus two xy. So what we have to do is have to subtract off that 2xy, but that 2xy is just the same thing as uh, 2 sigma 2. Now, you know, a lot of people like to use e, they call it e2. But so anyway, you see, you get this relationship between the uh, what we call the Cartesian coordinates and then the sigma variables. And it turns out to be easier in many cases to solve it in this elementary symmetric polynomial domain. Now in a similar fashion, we get these statements right here. Um, it's very, very similar. Of course you have to cube X plus Y. That's that's rather tedious, but I've, I've written it down up here for you. And anyway, in a very similar fashion, you'll note that Sigma one, let me just write it down. Um, sigma one times Sigma two Now, again, this means X plus Y uh, times X, Y. That's just equal to X squared Y. You see what we get? We get kind of this compactification, if you want to call it that, or we're making things just terser and it's, you know, maybe easier to manipulate. Okay. See, folks, and so now you can see these just fairly straightforward uh, simplifications here uh, lead to this statement that we get x cubed plus y cubed is uh, is actually equal x cubed. Uh, I'm sorry, x cubed plus y cubed is actually equal to this statement right here. Now, why is that useful? And again, y'all just leave this up here for you to verify. But in the name of getting through with the um, video, I'm going to go ahead and move on. So we have X cubed plus Y cubed in terms of Sigma one and Sigma two here. Okay. And right here, we're given X cubed plus Y cubed, it's equal to seven. So that's exactly where this statement comes from. You guys see that? That's kind of nice, isn't it? I simply replace X cubed plus Y cubed with, with what it's equal to in terms of what we call the ESPs, the elementary symmetric polynomials. All right. Now, this is a little cramped, um, but in a similar fashion, uh, all of this stuff, you see right here, this x squared plus y squared is exactly what we just derived right up here, right? It's exactly what we just derived right up in this section right here, okay? x squared plus y squared is equal to all this stuff, and that's what I've done. I've replaced x squared plus y squared with what it's equal to. x plus y is just sigma 1, okay? And then xy is sigma 2 equals 4. So you see, all I've done here and here is simply rewrite the original problem in terms of the elementary symmetric polynomials, all right? Now, the rest of it is just trying to substitute and solve for sigma one and sigma two.
Now, again, I don't know how much of this I should go through, um, but uh, I, I, and I left out the details of the arithmetic, but I wrote down all the essential steps here, folks. Okay, I wrote down all the essential steps. And right here, uh, what do we do? We solved, uh, we solved, we wrote, we wrote it this way, and then we solved, we found out that uh, sigma one from this cubic polynomial is actually equal to one. Now this is, this is, I know I'm skipping some steps here, but notice the rational zero theorem is what I did. And I just didn't want to put all that messy work in here, but we get this polynomial because we can substitute um, for where we at right here, folks, like right here. What I did is I found out what sigma two was in terms of sigma one on this statement right here. You see sigma two in terms of sigma one, okay? So that's how this statement right here got rewritten entirely in terms of sigma one. It's kind of cool. Now, again, I'll leave out some of the details as far as multiplying it all out, but when you multiply it all out, you end up with this cubic polynomial in the variable sigma one, okay? And by the rational zeros theorem, and this is some guessing and testing, but you can see that one, uh, it's educated guessing and testing, right? Because uh, the, the rational zeros will, uh, come from this constant term over this constant term right in this constant term over one you know what i mean it's just you run through you can run through all the rational zeros by putting all the all the uh factors of seven in the numerator and all the factors of negative two in the denominator and it turns out one works uh you can check that one uh this actually this is minus two plus 12 minus 10 equals zero right and also it's not as obvious but minus seven halves is a solution to this equation so what that means, folks, sigma one, uh, I, I use sigma one is equal to one in this very first step here. If sigma one equals to one uh, implies that sigma two is equal to minus two using the substitution. Again, I, I just went back and used this substitution to figure out what sigma two was. Okay, and again, uh, leaving out all the, the arduous details of the arithmetic, but uh, we get sigma one. Uh, if sigma one is equal to the one you see right here, this statement implies that sigma two is equal to negative two. And if, again, if you carry on right here, you'll end up with a quadratic that factors. And so you get uh, x equals two and x equals negative one. Now, y'all, it doesn't make any difference which one is which. This is what they call a symmetrical system. You could rename it whatever you want. It's a symmetrical system and you, so you can swap things. But I tried to convey that right here. X equals two, y equals negative one is a solution and x equals negative one and y is equal to two, rather than, it, it just seems cumbersome to write it any other way. So folks, these are a pair of uh, solutions, x equals two, uh, y equals negative one, and x equals negative one, y equals two, okay? And so that is a couple of the solutions. Now, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next page here, because we're gonna just do the very same thing for minus seven halves here. You see, we, we just resolved the situation for sigma one equals to one, uh, and we got these values for x and y, the x and y coordinates, if you will. Uh, we're solving for x, y ordered pairs, you know. I didn't quite write it that way, but hopefully this notation gets the point across. And so the very on the next page, we'll just do, do the very same process. And I left out even more of the steps on that, but it, it's something you can fill in, it's not too bad. We'll do the very same thing on the next page for minus seven halves to get the complex solution. So let me, let me clear some of this stuff out. All right, let's move along uh, to the next page. And again, folks, on the next page, we'll just be using minus seven halves to, to engender or create the, um, the complex solutions, it turns out. Okay, here we go. Now, y'all, again, you can see exactly what I said. For sigma one is equal to minus seven halves. Again, I, I left out all the, just the arithmetic. That's just something that can be done. It's just, it just clutters up the screen, you know? But if sigma one uh, equals to minus seven halves, this statement right here, will just, if you just do the arithmetic, you'll get sigma two is equal to 19 over four. And again, I, I, I sort of apologize, but I just didn't want to cramp this thing up too much. Uh, you end up with this statement right here. And again, you guys can just follow the steps here. It's all right there. And I did my best to keep it clear and where you guys can, can read it on your own time at your own pace. Um, so, so you get, this would be a quadratic, it turns out, and you can see it very clearly. You'll have minus X squared, minus seven half X. Uh, and you can see when you, when you, if you, you
picture. Guys, let me know what you think. I thought it was cool. And uh, it's, it's a nice uh, way to motivate the, the essential importance of uh, the elementary symmetric polynomials or the ESPs.